Thank you for your interest in this auction. What we're taking a look at is a very unique uh, scrapbook on early aviation, especially balloons and dirigibles. And most of the material in here seems to date from 1910. There are newspaper articles and other articles. Uh, the collector didn't preserve a date with each one, but as you look at them, you can tell most of the material is right around in the 1910 uh, pre-World War I era. So let's take a look. First of all, condition issues. This is, as with most scrapbooks that are about 100 years old, you'll find that there is some uh, fragility going on, especially in the spine here. It's a little fragile. The front cover is still attached, but it's kind of barely hanging on. Uh, but other than that, the interior pages, as you know, most of these are, are a sort of newsprint material, so they're a little on the fragile side and yellowed as well. But the material is just beautiful. So here we can start. You can see there are newspaper clippings from the period, and as I say, most of them are undated, but as you do the research, you can easily find the dates on them. Some are from magazines. This one's obviously from a magazine. Uh, this one here says, uh, Little Donald Joseph Curtis, the youngest aviator. That's a cute picture. And then it talks about men of the movement, Count von Zeppelin, J.C. McCoy, Leo Stevens, and so forth, with a short biography from the late 1800s about them. These, uh, as I say, there's some early aviation, biplanes, and so forth. Uh, a lot of dirigibles, as we'll see. Airship bought by the Dominion government. That is a newspaper clipping. These seem to have come out of a magazine. And we'll just flip through these quickly so you can see what's in there, but it's just a wealth of material. Some of them are fold out. As you can see with this one, very interesting piece uh, from the period. The title of this article is When Burglars Learned to Handle the Airplane with Precision and Silence. And the idea here is that you need to secure the roof of your house as well as the exterior of your house because they're going to land on airplanes and uh, rob your home. Very interesting article there. Uh, fortunately, I don't think that's been happening very much. Uh, a lot of material in here is loose, as you can see with this one. For whatever reason, some things were, were just never uh, attached to the page. Here's another one that's a, an article from a magazine with different kinds of biplanes and toy. These are actually toy versions of it. And there are some blank pages in here. So for whatever reason, Obviously, nothing was ever on that page, and it looks like maybe a, a separation of material. So, uh, John Moissant established a new airplane record. There's another picture uh, having to do with that. And a lot of these came out, came from newspapers out of around the 1910 era, as you can see on some of the, the pictures. These are all about that same aviator. And we continue, uh, wireless messages from airplanes. Then again, there, there are some blank pages there. More pictures from the time. Wilbur Wright in Italy with his biplane. We can see uh, in, in Dayton, uh, Bishop Wright and his two sons at a celebration in their honor in Dayton. There's Orville and Wilbur. Again, a few. There are a lot of pages in this book, but there are some that are blank in between. So a lot on biplanes before it gets into dirigibles and zeppelins. There's a triplane, uh, E.V. Rowe, the Englishman with the only triplane in the world, starting in flight on Thursday, September 8th, Atlantic, Massachusetts. M. Moraine, the French airman. Again, there's some very large articles. Uh, you can't see this entire article, but it talks about an aviation meet in Belmont Park, a tournament. Again, researching this, you could tell exactly what year all these things are, but they're not labeled as such. More very early aviation articles. Uh, Pollen in flight in Blackpool, England. There's the signature of Pollen. Latham trying to fly the English Channel, and so forth. So we'll just flip through here, and you can see all the early aviation. Some comics having to do with the aviation. Uh, Eugene Eli of San Francisco and his wife. 
a aviation meet in the Baltimore area, some historic aviation meets, Halthorpe, Halthorpe Field, This has to do with Curtis landing at Governor's Island, uh, Sunday, 1910. This, uh, this actually is from a paper from 1910, and it has to do with the May 1910 event. So again, most of this, that material was from 1910, uh, about the biplanes and triplanes. And then it continues on. We'll flip through this a little faster to save time in the video. Again, a few blank pages in there. And then we get into dirigibles, and really the entire back of this book gets into Zeppelins, airships, dirigibles of all sorts. Again, these are newspaper photos and clippings from the, the era, uh, pre-World War I, you can tell. Magazine articles, there's some, again, there's some in here that are loose, talking about the, the dirigibles. Frank Goodale, the boy aeronaut. Just a lot of material. Again, some more blank pages. And that is pretty much it for that section. And he has a few more things in the back having to do with balloons, as you can see here. That's, this is another meet. Four nations to compete for the International Balloon Cup. So. Again, the, the blank pages were separating the section, and then back here it talks a lot about balloonists of the time. He has a few loose things in the back. Uh, the Cross Alps flight by Wayman, which again, we're talking around the 1910 era. And that's it for the scrapbook. So, very interesting scrapbook, just packed with really unique period material. And, as I mentioned, I'm throwing in some bonus items that aren't from that period, but are from the same collector's estate. These are late, later items. Uh, here's a clipping from a science magazine talking about the man who sailed across the Alps with a date of 1925. So obviously this magazine was printed after 1925. Uh, here's a page from 1914 where it talks about a Russian airship flying near the German lines, and, and you can see the dirigible there. Very interesting. So this is a period uh, page from World War I. Here is uh, another World War I period item, the Illustrated London News, and it talks about uh, Lieutenant Brandon uh, when he bombed a raiding Zeppelin in the night, March 31st to April 1st. Again, that was World War I. Here is Another midweek pictorial. This is this is post World War One. This is from 1923, and this had to deal with had to do with zeppelins, and so forth. And there's the front page of it. Here's another midweek pictorial cover that he collected from 1930. Again, between the wars, and it's talking about the new 1930 model airplanes. And as I say, these are bonus items. These photographs here came with it, and these do have some damage. They're, they could be frames, but there is some damage generally along the right-hand side of each of these large photographs. This photograph is stamped on the back, uh, Smithsonian Institution. So this was probably purchased from them, but in storage, apparently it was allowed to stick together with other photographs, and some of the emulsion is damaged over here, unfortunately. So again, these are bonus items. I'm just throwing them in. Here's a beautiful large picture of uh, the dirigible R33 printed on photographic paper as well. But again, the emulsion on the right-hand end uh, exhibits some damage. So you could frame that and probably even cover that portion if you wanted to. That's actually a very beautiful photograph. And here's the last one. Uh, again, some damage, unfortunately, along this end where they let these stick together in storage. So uh, don't consider these photographs as you're uh, looking at this auction. I'm just throwing them in free as bonus items because they came from the same estate. But they're really beautiful. If you wanted to uh, frame them, you could. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can have a better look. But you'd, you'd have to try to cover probably that emulsion damage or mat it somehow so it didn't show too much. There's the other one that we were looking at. Nice large photograph. And here's a small one that, that did come from the Smithsonian and does exhibit some damage as well. So those are the bonus items. The scrapbook is just absolutely amazing. And 
Uh, thank you for your interest and happy bidding on the auction.